My name is Christina Alexandra, and without boring you with all the titles and accomplishments that you can see probably anytime on my LinkedIn profile, I will better share how I actually feel about who I am. And honestly, as being part of consultant, most of the times I feel I would actually be a part of version of Sherlock Holmes, as on a daily basis, I'm working with large public and heavily regulated institutions, and usually, uh, they share with me more clues and hints than actually give me answers to what they really want and need. So as a part of consultant, uh, most of my focus actually goes towards investigating issues and finding solutions or way out. And in today's session specifically, I would like to talk about the why, why online marketing channels are nowadays so important and what are the latest marketing online trends because they change and they especially this year they change tremendously we know that all uh, the what uh, what are the challenges we are currently facing in 2020 online world the tools of course what features of Salesforce and Pardot we should enable and use to eliminate our marketing challenges and gray areas that uh, a lot of us, I guess, have. And the how, the recommended actions and solutions. And this is where you can start, I guess, taking screenshots of my screen to know what you can do tomorrow. So what is happening now in the marketing world and why I want to talk about it? So the advertising landscape has changed beyond recognition over the past decades. Do you agree? I personally think it's, I mean, it has been a huge shift. Uh, the digital channels now are accounting for more than half of total ad spend and uh, strong growth of social media, video, e-commerce and search over the past 10 years has came to an expense of more traditional channels as we may still use and remember that are TV and print. And in the number one point on the red line, we can see the sharp decline in TV ad spend over the recent years that has actually coincided, oops, uh, with the rise of social media that we now, for the most of uh, us or businesses we use, and online video campaigns and experts predict that TV consumption will continue to fall in the coming years and the social media and all the marketing campaigns that we're running on them will be even more impactful. In the number two on the white line, we can see the newspaper and magazine ads spent both peaked before financial crisis, but since then actually have never came back. And in the point number three on the blue line, we can see the rise of search campaigns uh, continuing uh, to rise only in the recent years, and it has been meteoric. And the data showing online consumption actually has doubled since the start of pandemic. And search growth is likely to continue only to grow with all the new apps like TikTok, et cetera, that are coming. And obviously, our task as a marketers is a to figure out how we can use these platforms effectively for our businesses and b to be able to prove us using these platforms we actually need to know how to track them right so that's the challenge so what does it all mean for us all marketers out there and based on the salesforce latest marketing report we can learn that Obviously, marketers are meeting the challenges by increasing and trying to increase their adoption of various digital touch points. And search engine marketing, customer communities, and mobile apps are experiencing particularly dramatic increase in use. So in my presentation today, I want to focus on some specific use cases in how you can smartly utilize your existing Salesforce and Parda tools to know where you're actually your ROI is coming from and to find which are actually the most profitable marketing channels where you should invest your and your team's energy and time. Sounds like a plan? 
Sounds like a plan to me. So in the following slides, I want to share with you some more technical capabilities of Pardot that you can use to shed more light on actual numbers that your marketing team is bringing to the business from executing their campaigns on social platforms. And first, I would like to begin with solutions that we have for Pardot. And when I say solutions, these are actually all fantastic out of the box things and features that you have in Pardot and you should set up if you have not already. And these are Pardot connectors, Pardot campaign tracking code, Pardot page actions, Pardot custom redirects, Pardot social posts, Pardot file form and list sent completion actions, and also engagement program actions, rules, and triggers that you can effectively use and are there for you. And as a first scenario that I often uh, discuss and set up uh, with the businesses that I work with are the trail of cookie crumbs, we can call it. Uh, because to part out, at first, all your website visitors will be always anonymous users, right? And here is the moment where we can use Pardot, uh, Pardot tracking code and Google Analytics tracking code to actually help your website start a tracking all of these visitors because they can find you through Google search, by referral link or social post or even typing your URL into a browser. And while interacting with your site, visitors might take obviously various actions uh, click on a specific links, view your pricing page or download white paper. And unless they actually convert to a prospect by giving you their email address and any other identifying information you may ask, there is no way how you can directly interact with them, right? So the good news for you are that you can place the Pardot and Google Analytics tracking code on your website header. So Pardot can track your visitor interactions, activities, even while they are pre-converted. And by adding a tracking cookie to their browser when they first visit your website. So Pardot will then continue tracking your visitor activities while they navigate through your website and interact with your marketing materials. And to make sure in all cases, all is tracked, uh, you should also optimize and utilize Pardot's tracking opt-in pop-up on your site. Uh, and it's again, it's very easily uh, can be set up in your Pardot. So the prospect, uh, when they actually confirm, they are fully tracked, but the, even, even if they ignore, you will know that they have been visited to your website, only you won't be able to see those speci specific pages that they visit. So this would be that first kind of part of magic that is available for you to use. And here's actually the proof for the pudding uh, that I was just explaining. So here, for example, on the bottom, I have made it kind of from least green to more green. We can see that this per prospect first was cookied on the April 30th, then he came back on the July 15th, 16th, 23rd, 30th, and then only on the 2nd September, they decided, oh, I actually want to convert uh, because I want to get, for example, this specific white paper from this brand. And from that point on, we actually then knew who this person was. We sent them we send to them a double opt-in email if that's obviously required also for your company and then all of the re the rest actions that they clicked on the website all the links pages everything was tracked so that's the magic of Pardot and google analytics uh, that we should obviously all utilize because it's there as soon as you purchase your Pardot account the second gray area that uh, for Many, uh, in many cases that I see Pardot marketers actually kind of miss out is actually the email forwarding. And uh, it's obviously its ability for you to report on prospects that came to the business through their colleagues or friends, depending on the matter of the, of, of the business you're in. 
uh, and forwards in the old world also we can call them kind of as uh, word of mouth but technically they just forwarded the email and because technically there is no there is obviously nothing stopping the prospect to simply use the default outlook or gmail feature to forward the email uh, but i believe we marketers we need to be smarter than them and we need to come up with some visual cues that can help them to do what we actually want them to do and one of the solutions that uh, many times I have helped businesses to implement is actually to have that specific CTA button or link that will going to be very inviting for the prospect in the email template where they would when by taking this action, they can simply have a small form. Hey, uh, invite your friend or colleague, just enter their name, enter their email. And whenever they actually do that specifically, like, A, we can secretly pass the original person's name in the custom redirect to know who was that person who forwarded and invited that new prospect to potentially maybe reward them later on. And then additionally, based on this small form that they capture, we can then invite or forward the same email to that new prospect to, A, uh, inform them that, I mean, their friend just recommended them and B, ask them again and win them as loyal subscriber with another double opt-in if that's required based on the country you are in. And here, obviously, I'm giving you the technical steps that you should uh, do to accomplish this solution. And then tracing social media. Uh, so that's, uh, again, a very, very interesting topic. and. Uh, a lot of times, uh, and with Pardot, we know that we can, we can connect Pardot by default with Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, but there are some limitations, like, for example, you cannot at mention somebody in the Twitter from within Pardot. You can't post, like, multiple images or multiple uh, or even, like, videos at all from these social interactions. But what we then must do in every case uh, whenever we are actually posting anything on social media we need to become very very strategic on using past part of custom redirects and assign them to a each specific new campaign that we are creating in salesforce because i believe anything and everything that you do uh, or post on social media and it gets public eye needs to be tracked and I mean, this is the way, again, how you will be able to know how effective and how effective your marketing actions are, uh, how effective is a specific time, date, manner, language, image uh, that actually you are creating uh, to know and to know. And in the end of the day, whenever we're actually creating and posting something, we always need to have a goal and, and vision in our mind how we can convert that person, how we can actually know that that person viewed, that it mattered to them. And we can only know that if they're physically brought to a landing page that was obviously very, very appealing offer for them in the first place to actually click on that link and get there and be that our landing page was boom and sparked an interest and it gave them a lot of value. And because of that value, they were actually eager to then give us their details further. And then finally, another uh, use case that I want to discuss is uh, obviously being as clever, uh, potentially asking for help, seeking professionals, because the more internal internal apps you will be able to connect and automate in the floor, in, in your marketing flow, the smarter you will become and the more obviously money you will be able to generate for the business. So again, uh, we're talking about uh, being clever about working together with your IT team by being actually also immersed and curious on starting to use all these various tools and apps that can help us to learn more. And obviously these tools can be Zapier connecting maybe some new 
multiple, uh, I don't know, apps that you have. It can be API, it can be Hotjar to actually start having these heat maps uh, on your website and see where people struggle the most, which buttons they click, where they struggle. So all of these things can really help you to learn more because the goal for every marketeer and in general person is we need to invest in our success right and we need to invest time to set think uh, to set part out properly up we need to invest time when we are creating campaign and not only creating visuals but we also create that back end of the campaign that can track that campaign and also i mean whenever we're talking about technology uh, we need to invest in the tech that we use uh, and how it's set up to make sure it's actually, I mean, giving us the value and giving us even more reasons to want to use this technology. And how I like to think about, in general, about the whole marketing aspect and everything that we do, uh, I always think about it as job, job, right hook, job, job, right hook. Like, I mean, it can be like a boxing game or something, but whenever you're actually creating something that will see a public eye we need to always make sure there is a hook there is a value in the end that will convert that prospect and that means always giving value it can be in the form of a webinar of a white paper unlocking video discount code it might be like a 30 minutes call with the best sales expert you have whatever is that your business is in, you need to always, whenever you're creating something, there needs to be a hook because it's better less, but there is a quality rather than we're just going on all the social platforms. We are blasting, 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 but then in the end of the day, we're actually not knowing. So what brings the results? What brings the money? Where the prospect came from? And uh, I mean, and I'm sure because you decided to purchase part out in Salesforce, that was obviously probably on your mind. I want to have this smart tool to be able to track my prospects properly, to be able to track my email templates, who clicked, who didn't, who unsubscribed, who bounced, what else can I do to improve my marketing? And then I guess working together as a team. And now the second part of the presentation is obviously solutions for Salesforce. Not only we're setting up Pardot, but we're obviously we're connecting Pardot to the major core plugin CRM that we have, and that's the powerhouse called Salesforce. And it's Salesforce. What now, out of the box, you can start utilizing, and I'm sure you already are, are obviously Salesforce connected campaigns. It's already, I would say, old topic back 2018. Uh, Salesforce campaign influence, that's a little bit newer, but obviously we want to know which were those campaigns that influenced our opportunities, right? Uh, and then additional add-on licenses we will need, but ph phenomenal features uh, and outcomes that we can get is obviously uh, also by using Pardot Engage emails, uh, Pardot Engage for Outlook and Gmail, because I know some of you are probably still send sending sneaky emails to prospects one-to-one through Outlook and Gmail, and with those, you can send them actually part out email templates from within your Outlook or Gmail. Uh, part out engage alerts, uh, engage reports and dashboards that are actually very, very insightful and B2B MA. And the first thing uh, that I want to talk about is obviously your opportunity to view reports uh, and all your marketing efforts in Salesforce. And uh, we should at this point uh, be working together with our Salesforce admin to add these engagement components on your campaign, on your lead and a contact page layouts, because when you do, uh, you get uh, extremely great insights with whom, what and how many times clicked, for example, on your emails, specific links and campaigns. The same thing you can also do for the account. So on the account level, by placing these built-in reports and dashboards, you'll see how the whole company and how all contacts and leads from that company engage with your business, uh, actually interacted with you. That can, again, give you, if you're into B2B specifically business, can give you a hot identifier for all of your sales team that this is the account that they should focus on because they really, really looks like need us to help. And then 
Uh, another thing is obviously you can create then additionally engagement report types to then start reporting separately on all your list emails, landing pages, forms, links, and campaigns to know what is doing better and in general to understand in total how your campaigns are doing. And then uh, Sercante team also have developed a, a brilliant automated opportunity contact role app that will help you additionally automatically assign uh, all your contacts who impacted the opportunities uh, further in your, uh, I mean, reporting in general. Uh, then the next bit uh, that I want to talk about is the campaign influence on opportunities. So we as marketers, uh, we all the time, uh, I mean, we kind of spend a lot of times obviously creating uh, all the campaigns, all the nurturings, all the beautiful visual stuff that is going out there. Uh, and then and further, we're kind of handing it all nicely to all the salespeople uh, and what uh, actually Salesforce admin can set up to help further the salespeople and then the higher management to know and to see is to have this campaign influence where you can additionally also set some time frames, specific time frames and the maximum number of how long each campaign can actually influence uh, that specific opportunity and relate that to your ROI. Uh, and also that information can always be added and visible for your uh, sales team and other employees on the record itself. So you in real time actually see what is happening in the business. And then uh, bringing clarity to your sales team, uh, because uh, I think a lot of times teams can be disconnected. I know now it's even more special time in the world when we're sitting kind of all on our uh, in, in our own home offices. So it can be uh, even more challenging to kind of communicate. So with Pardot uh, engage feature functionalities, we can also let our sales team to a be fully equipped and sent uh, one to one emails or one to many emails from within Salesforce records inside Salesforce. So that means not even needing them to go to Outlook or Gmail as they work on a lead or on a contact or on that campaign, they can straight away navigate and send the list email or uh, add them to the list or add them to the engagement program from that record. And basically, based on their call or interaction that they had, they can already act uh, and be there to, I guess, speedy uh, proceed and uh, move the process of the sale or marketing further. And uh, uh, and again, uh, here are the steps uh, that you can follow to add all these components on your page layouts, on your list views to set up all these buttons. And if you are a new user of Pardot, uh, I think and I believe you should potentially maybe add all of the options that are out there to see what is actually best working for your business and what you find effective. Because with time, if you see and feel there are buttons and use cases that you are not using, you can always remove them. But I mean, it's kind of sad if there is something great that I mean, you are potentially not using by not adding it in the first place. Uh, then the Gmail and Outlook. Uh, obviously, for many, many years, it has been mystery that we carried somehow out that communication from our CRM or marketing tool to our private Gmail and Outlook. And then when we, I don't know, changed the jobs, changed the role, or somebody got ill, then, I mean, nobody knew what was actually happening with that lead for all that time. So now with Pardot Engage, you can have also the Pardot functionality and trackability inside your Gmail and Outlook. Uh, you can utilize your Pardot email templates from within these mailing tools. From within these mailing tools, you can also create a new task in Salesforce. Uh, you can do uh, another things. You can actually, from within your uh, Gmail or Outlook, you can look up if this lead or a contact or account exists and make any necessary updates. So again, Pardot actually kind of never leaves you, if I can say so, because all the platforms that you are using and where you can be interacting and tracking anything kind of part out actually made sure that 
it's there for you when you need it, if that makes sense. And the same thing if we now go back inside Salesforce, uh, we have the real-time engagement uh, dashboards that every sales team and salesperson can set up for themselves. And uh, sales teams uh, can set up the filtered lists that will appear on their big screen in real time. And depending on the metrics they're interested in, it can be page views, file downloads, some paid search, some specific maybe paid highly uh, qualifying campaigns or just search or maybe like some key hot forms, inquiries, uh, maybe some webinars, events, one-to-one -one email open. So this is actually a great one. In real time, you can have a column where you see in real time that somebody opened your one-to-one -one email, you just send them from within Salesforce or maybe your Gmail. And then again, uh, based on the tariff, person most of the times can't cover the whole country. They usually have their own specific territory. So you can actually segment your prospects that you are dealing with based on the country and state you are actually based in. So again, part out engage functionality. And uh, from my perspective, uh, this was obviously tons of content that I uh, tried to, I mean, download and share with you in a uh, quite a short time. Uh, I will now quickly jump into the, uh, jump into, jump into share screen. Yeah. Am I still sharing the screen? I'm not too sure, but I am uh, curious about Q and A uh, and I guess answer any questions you have guys. Uh, with the release of new email builder and email content accessible in Salesforce, how does it conflict with Engage tool? Great questions. New email builder, the same trackability, the same functionality. So everything that Engage and uh, uh, all the tools previously were tracking before, you can do it and track now with them. Uh, is streaming uh, categorized as television in the graph? Uh, streaming, you mean streaming YouTube videos, streaming uh, Facebook Live? Uh, I guess uh, in terms of the television, that was specifically meant as the old school TV box that we sit in front and watch. Uh, in terms of the streaming, if it's a YouTube, uh, if it's your Vimeo, Vimeo videos that again can be tracked. So this is, uh, from my perspective, a new technology that we can integrate through API and through other ways and means how we can actually track it. So even though there isn't an Instagram connector, we can still leverage custom redirects in stories and bios to track engagement. Correct. Correct. This is my favorite thing to do. Snap that custom redirect everywhere you can. Obviously, it's a little bit harder to put it in the text. You can, but people can't click from the description text from the comment itself. But people can definitely be redirected to your bio link or your Insta stories. Use those swipe ups and track them. They are magic. Uh, can we add forms in an email? and send them to a landing page with a form. I mean, so, uh, I mean, obviously, specifically form form, I mean, you can add them in the email maybe visually, but when they click on it, maybe you still want to redirect them to a landing page because we want to create an experience when it's actually easy to fill in that specific form. Uh, so I guess we really need to kind of be mindful and think about it. Maybe we can take this offline and get in touch with me personally so we can discuss. But if it's like specific form, I would feel the best user experience would be if we actually take them to a nice landing page where they can fill in properly all your questions. And the question from Maya, uh, we can include the part out cookie in our general GDPR banner, right? Uh, I mean, so where is your GDPR banner placed? Uh, so in terms of the part out cookie specifically, I would think that uh, you are placing it on your website itself. So it tracks the whole website. If we are talking about the GDPR banner, is it like that kind of pop up thing uh, that you specifically refer to? And if you are using the part out opt in GDPR, that banner, then it by default out of the box, we're going to have that part out true key cookie inside. And as 
ask visitors to accept all cookies or update their preferences. So yes, I think we're on the same page. Uh, GDPR Parrot uh, pop-up will be tracked automatically and uh, they should press yes and then they will be fully tracked and you're going to see all the pages that they viewed. If no, you're going to still see that, I mean, they are visiting your website, but you won't be able to see which pages specifically. Okie dokie. So, I think that's that. Ah, streaming Netflix, perhaps. I mean, obviously, so how they came to that uh, Netflix? So, did they came to that Netflix through the link? If they just go inside your Netflix channel, then if, if there is no way specifically how your Netflix integrates with your marketing tools, then obviously won't be able to track it. Does creating a lot of custom redirects in Pardot have a ne negative effect on SEO? No, uh, I don't believe so. Uh, there is no, because I mean, how, how SEO is relate related to custom redirects? Um, I mean, no, because custom redirect, you're gonna place it specifically for prospect to take an action somewhere. Uh, your SEO obviously will be based on the physical content that is available on the World Wide Web. All righty. No more questions. So I guess from my perspective, uh, ah, okay. Where do you find the opt-in banners? Is this something existing inside Salesforce Pardot to be enabled? Yes. So inside Pardot, if you navigate to your admin section on the left-hand side, if you click on the overview on that top bit and on, on up there, there will be a button, longer button with uh, tracking opt-in banner. So there inside you can actually set up the, uh, the message that pops in as on that opt-in banner. You can set up and add your CSS styling uh, that can be taken from your website's uh, designer, uh, some pre-creation, uh, and then you can enable it for all countries or specific countries or European countries. You can also choose to exclude some countries, and then you just need to press save and you need to test it. Is the engagement components available to be on the account page? If no, is this a plan? Yes, so engagement, so the engagement components are there for you on the account level in Salesforce. So these will be a generic engagement reports uh, that are based on all the uh, contacts uh, that, ha that are under in that uh, account and how they have interacted with your business. And that can be added by your Salesforce admin on your account page layout. Is the forward option you mentioned new? Uh, so, I mean, forward, forward has always existed there. Uh, what I was giving to you in my slides is the solution, uh, is the kind of workaround uh, that I have been personally implementing for businesses. And obviously, uh, it's something we marketers visually design and put in that email template that can be in the visual format of a button or a link. So pers so person, when they see forward, they're actually incentivized to click on specifically that link or a button rather than going to a default Outlook or Gmail session and just forwarding it using that functionality. So yeah. Hopefully I have covered everything so far. And yeah, what I probably, uh, obviously, uh, screen, share screen, Google Chrome. Uh, if anybody is still here, uh, I'm very sociable, uh, even though we are now kind of disconnected, uh, but I will be very more than happy to connect with you online. Uh, and also there is a wait list for our Pardot online course. If you want to learn Pardot in your own speed, in your own time, whenever you want, uh, feel free to sign up uh, and we will be there to help you. I'll be there to help you in general now to answer any questions you have. So let's keep in touch. 
and uh, yeah, let's keep communicating. And if we can't meet these days in person, let's meet online. So I guess, thank you guys for all your attention. I'm obviously ran a bit over, but it was a pleasure and see you when I see you. Bye-bye.